with the new release of his latest movie, The Fablemans, dropping in theaters this past weekend, I thought it would be a great opportunity now to go through my Steven Spielberg ranking list, including his latest movie, and we're going to dive into all of that good stuff up next. But before we begin, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment down below. I want to hear your favorite Spielberg movies, and now we are going to dive in to all that good stuff. There is perhaps no more prolific director in the history of film than Steven Spielberg. Obviously, there can be a whole lot of names that you could throw into contention for that list, but I think that he is, without a doubt, whether you enjoy all of his movies or not, I think, without a doubt, he is the most influential director of all time just for the course of cinema history. The amount that this man has changed and shaped the way that the movie industry works a countless number of times throughout his career is nothing short of legendary. I know some people might not always be in for some of his more sentimental movies, um, and he could be very hit or miss for some people but for me he is without a doubt my favorite filmmaker of all time there are no he has made so many of my favorite movies he perhaps has more five-star movies from me than any other director alive uh, throughout or dead uh, throughout history's cinema film whatever you want to say he is without a doubt the greatest of all time to me he has shaped cinema in a way that nobody else can if you are a fan of any big budget spectacle movie that comes out today you owe all of that to steven spielberg he created the blockbuster in 1975 with jaws he absolutely changed the shape of cinema multiple times throughout his career he is one of only two people in the history of cinema to have the highest grossing movie of all time and then beat his own record. He did it in 1982 with the release of E.T. He had the great, the highest grossing movie of all time. He beat it uh, so many years later, I believe in 1993 with Jurassic Park. It just an absolute stunning achievement. He was the first to do it. Out of the two people, he was the first to do it. Absolutely changed the landscape right there. And with the release of Jurassic Park, he pretty much ushered in the era of CGI mayhem that we see today. The only other person to do that, what Steven Spielberg did, was our man James Cameron. We will get to him in a, in a video later on down the line when Avatar The Way of Water comes out. But he did it in 1997 with Titanic and then beat his own record in 2009 with the release of Avatar. Avatar is still the highest grossing movie of all time. It lost it for maybe about a year, year and a half when Avengers Endgame had it. But Avatar is once again now the king and it is going to be interesting to see if James Cameron's going to be able to pull off a three-peat and he's going to beat his own record again with the release of Avatar The Way of Water. But that's a later video. That's James Cameron appreciation. We're here talking Steven Spielberg appreciation. I have seen every one of his movies except for the two um, first movies that he did before he blew up with Jaws. So you're not going to see Duel or the Sugarland Express on this list. I still have to get to those. It's just been impossible for me to find a way to see them. At some point I will, but I just haven't yet. So we will get to those one day. But for now, we are going to talk about everything from Jaws up until now, and we're going to dive into all that good stuff right now. And now for as much as I love Steven Spielberg. Some movie has to come in last place, doesn't it? Oh, there's a puppy. You want to say hello to the people? No? Okay. Now, of course, a movie does have to come in last place, and it really isn't a hard pick for this one. Um, it is one of the only Steven Spielberg movies. There's only two in his entire filmography that I really wouldn't ever want to watch again, and this is the first one here. My absolutely least favorite Steven Spielberg movie is The BFG. Um, it is a literary adaptation of the Road Dahl movie, uh, the Road Dahl movie, the Road Dahl book um, about a girl who meets a giant and goes on like a little whimsical tale. It seemed it does seem like something that would be right up Spielberg's alley where it, like he can do those big grandiose set pieces and that just wizardry that he does. And all that visually is there and it all is immaculate. I think the acting is good with Mark Rylance and everything. It's just, it was a movie that just did not hit me thematically or anything. It was just something that I was just like, I, this isn't really striking to me. It's kind of boring. Um, it had too many like kitty gags of like Mark Rylance's giant like farting and burping and stuff like that. It just, it was just one of those movies that felt Felt so beneath his talents like it felt like a movie that would be like a Steven Spielberg like ripoff that somebody was trying to copy him instead of like 
him personally. Um, so it falls here all the way at the bottom of the list. Up next after that is one of his only World War II misfires, and that is the movie 1941 with Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. Um, it is a comedy about World War II. It's just another one of those movies that just seems so un-Steven Spielberg-like. It is early in his filmography, so it is some, one of those things where he's still trying out his formula and figuring out his style and trying to see like what works with him and what doesn't. Um, and this is one of those ones where he, it was a quick learning curve for him where he realizes like this was not his thing. Um, this was not his foray into stuff like that. He And he quickly course corrected and it was just off to the races from then. This was one of his only misfires in his entire career. So naturally it lands down here. Up next is the first of two remakes that Spielberg has done in his career, and that is the movie Always with Richard Dreyfuss, John Goodman, Holly Hunter. Um, this is it's a solid movie. From this point on, we're getting the movies that I could watch again. Um, this one's more towards the bottom where it's ones that I don't really enjoy as much, but still has that really good Spielberg flair to it. Um, I think cinematography and his directing style in this is probably the best part of what propels this movie. Because again, this is a very, this movie is much more um, restrained than you'd normally get from a Spielberg movie. It very much is just um, very scaled down. But it's still a decent little story. I enjoy it for what it was. Um, it's not one that I would return to too often. But if I ever saw it on TV or anything and it had been a long time, I might give it another rewatch. After that is the sci-fi movie AI Artificial Intelligence, a movie that he took over from Stanley Kubrick, um, all about this young robot boy um, in this world of the sci-fi universe. And it's almost like Pinocchio, I feel like, but like with a robot instead of a wooden puppet. Um, it's I gotta rewatch it because I watched this when I was a kid and it really wasn't like my cup of tea. Again, um, something that you can always say regardless of if you enjoy Steven Spielberg movie or not is that it looks fantastic. The man knows how to pick shot selections that just are absolutely thematic and grab you. So it's it's still, it looks visually immaculate. Like I remember visually I, that just propelled me through the movie. So did the performances. It was mostly the story that kind of like wasn't grabbing me as much as a kid. I do have to rewatch it and see if maybe on retrospect now with new eyes that maybe this might move up from the rankings a little bit. But as of right now, this one sits more towards the bottom of the barrel. Our first Indiana Jones movie strikes next, and it is Indiana Jones and the, Christ the Crystal Skull. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Um, this is another movie that just, uh, in these lower tier Spielberg movies, it's, the, the Spielbergisms are there, but the story is just not coalescing like some of the better ones that you see here. So it, it, it ends up hurting the movie. Um, this one especially, what ends up hurting it a little bit more for me is all of the CGI that they needlessly throw into this one. Um, I'm also not the biggest fan of the idea that we're going to throw aliens into this world with um, with Indiana Jones. I always liked it more where he was dealing with like these religious artifacts that kind of had the spirituality of um, the mystical to it. I, I was not the biggest fan of them suddenly now being like, we're going to throw aliens into the mix. I get it. it you were trying to do a 50s sci-fi B movie, but I just don't think it applied well to Indiana Jones. Up next is the World War I movie, War Horse. Um, this is a movie, this, this was a tailor-made adaptation for Steven Spielberg to do. He, he's somebody that can absolutely pull the cinematic, like, vistas and spectacle that you need from a production like this, especially over such a story where your main character is a horse and we're just following him through World War I. Um, it's a very interesting idea. It's, it's an idea that I feel like only Spielberg would be able to masterfully bring to the screen. And again, it is. It's one of those ones that, that thematically and visually, it's just oozing with just beautiful shots. Um, but it's 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 not that it's bad. I do enjoy this movie. All these movies now that we're gonna get to, I enjoy all of them. It's just when you're you're put when you're putting movies like this up against the absolute king who's made so many masterpieces, some of them are just not gonna be able to get up there when you're looking at them from the most basic of levels. And this is one of those ones that does end up falling back down the list simply because of just so much greatness that he's done later on. But this is still an exceptionally well done war movie and you absolutely should give it a shot. The first of Steven Spielberg's Jurassic Park movies hit here and we've got The Lost World. Jurassic Park. Um, I do enjoy this movie a lot. I think there's a lot of really good stuff 
in this movie. It's another one much like uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull where it's hampered by a story that just does not quite cut the mustard as well as the originals did. Um, and this one is very much like that. There's a little bit too much. He, he leaned too much into some of the slapstick comedy in this one. And I mean that mostly where he kind of like neutered the velociraptors where a girl who just knows gymnastics was able to outfight a velociraptor. So like there's a lot of really silly shit in this movie but then there's also a lot of really awesome stuff like i think the scene where they're trying to patch the leg of the baby t-rex and the two other t-rexes come and knock the convoy off the side of the cliff is one of the most thrilling scenes put to film it is so fucking good and it is obviously the 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 key set piece of that movie i'm also a sucker and i do really enjoy the silly end with t-rex rampaging through san diego um i know it's silly but i think it's a silly that works Works, as opposed to the silliness of a bat of a gymnastics girl out fighting a velociraptor that's that's silly in that you can't believe it but this is more silly in that like this is just what would happen if we put a t-rex in the middle of a, of a little city um so that one actually like gets to me i do enjoy that part i think that one's funny so there's a lot of really cool scenes in this movie but much like a lot of these lower spielberg movies it's the story is just not there perfectly so it hampers these movies and it puts them more down towards the bottom of his filmography up next after that is his one of his masterpieces lincoln now for me i do enjoy this movie a lot but it is a movie that i don't think i'll ever really watch again it is up over some of these other movies like i could watch the lost world jurassic park anytime it's on but I still recognize that Lincoln is a better movie, but I would rather watch The Lost World anytime over watching Lincoln again. And I think the biggest reason to that is just because this movie is basically just a tour de force for Daniel Day-Lewis as Lincoln. He is absolutely phenomenal in it. It is one of the best performances you've ever seen in film. The, the story, though, is where I take the biggest umbrage. It's just, it's not that exciting. They try to pose it as, like, this big thriller movie where it's like you don't know if he's going to be able to pass the vote that he needs to try and end the Civil War. Where anybody who knows anything about history or has followed along with any other, like, Civil War movies that have come out is that we know the ending to this mystery already. And this thriller that you're kind of trying to pose it as just doesn't really work because we already know what the ending is. So there's really the most that you're getting out of this is just watching Daniel Day-Lewis's amazing performance. Now, as always, what we can say with every other Spielberg movie is that visually it looks amazing. His shot selection is just unparalleled to anybody else that makes film. It is an absolute stunning achievement in film. It's just one of those movies that I just, I'll probably never go back to watch again. But I do recognize just how freaking good it is, how well the performances are, how well it's shot and everything. And it's just absolutely fantastic. But I'd still watch The Lost World any day over this one. Up next is a movie based on a book that owed its entire being basically to Steven Spielberg and what a coincidence that he would end up directing the adaptation of it and that is Ready Player One, a movie that wears its 80s references and pop culture references and Spielberg references on its sleeve. It is a quintessential piece of pop culture art that is a just testament to all of the goodies that we all grew up loving in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and it's something that only Spielberg could really bring to life. It, his flair for visual acumen is all over the place. Um, it's it's just a fun movie, really. Like this this is a movie that it's just it's fun to have on the. It's one of those background movies. Like it could be on TV and you could be doing the laundry or cooking or whatever, and it's just on in the background and it just always works. It's just something that's just effortless fun um i love the book um so i really enjoyed the movie that came of this and of course getting steven spielberg to make this movie was just an absolute crowning achievement because he could bring it to life in a way that most other directors can't do up next is a movie that i'm still waiting for the sequel on boys and that is the adventures of tintin um this is just such a fun movie i remember seeing this in theaters uh, when i was actually in disney i went and saw it at night one day after a day in the parks and it was just so much fun. This this is a great movie. The motion capture work in it is absolutely fantastic. The story is fun. Um, the performances are fun. This is just a fun movie. Um, and it was just something that Spielberg um, and I believe, who is the other one? Was it, um, why can't I think of who it is? It's not, um, 
Peter Jackson. That's who it is. Peter Jackson was the guy. Who was, yeah, Pete, you were supposed to make the second one. What the fuck is going on? Let's go. Uh, this is just a fun movie. It's a lot. It's it's one of those ones that I feel like doesn't get talked enough about in Spielberg's filmography. But it's another one, much like whenever you put a new toy of cinema out there, you can give it to Spielberg to play with, and he's gonna make something fucking incredible. And this is one of those ones. Up next is that mid two thousands range of Spielberg movies where he just really had nothing left to prove, and he was just making stuff that interested him. And you were getting getting movies that weren't quite what you would expect to see from Spielberg, but they still all had their fun to them. And that is The Terminal with Tom Hanks um, and Catherine Zeta-Jones. A movie about Tom Hanks being stuck in an airport because his country, I believe, like falls under or whatever, is in some sort of like civil war. So his passport suddenly becomes like unusable. So he's just stuck in this airport, like waiting for the everything to blow over and for him to get a visa or whatever so he could go out. It's 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 a fun movie, and it's one of those sentimental movies that only Spielberg knows how to play with and bring out. Um, it's 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 a lot of fun. I really enjoy this movie. It, I can watch it anytime it's on. It's just one of those effortlessly enjoyable movies. It's not one of those ones that's going to break the bank or just do anything new with cinema, but it's a movie that is worth your time, makes you feel like you got your bang for your buck. I remember seeing it in theaters. I fucking love Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg together is just a match made in heaven, and this is just a great movie. Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg strike again, and this is in the mid-2010s movie The Post. This is when Spielberg was just in that era of it doesn't matter what he makes, he's just going to crank out a reliable movie, and this is a reliable movie. It's just a lot of fun. I do love those like type of journalistic movies where they're trying to get a big score on a story. Those movies are just a lot of fun to me, so I got a lot of mileage out of this one. And you put Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep in a Spielberg movie, and you're just printing money at that point. So I really enjoyed this movie. Um, it is a spectacularly entertaining thriller. It is a lot of fun. You should definitely check it out if you have not seen it. Tom Hanks and Spielberg strike again here in another mid-2010s movie, and this one is Bridge of Spies. This movie is a lot of fun. It is a movie about Tom Hanks, who is a Brooklyn lawyer, who finds himself thrusted into the center of the Cold War when the CIA hires him on an impossible mission to negotiate the release of a captured um, American pilot, and we're going to trade him for a um, Russian, played by Mark Rylance, um, and it just follows their relationship as they go through these motions to do this plot. It is a wildly fun ride. It is just magnificent. I really enjoyed this movie. I did not expect to enjoy this movie as much as I did. Um, when the trailer came out, I was just like, yeah, this looks like just another, this looks like just Spielberg just running the motions, baby. Like He's like, yeah, I'll do that movie, and it's just going to be fucking reliable, and it absolutely is reliable, but it ends up being so much more than that because it was just such a gripping movie that only Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg can bring to life. Up next is the first of two Tom Cruise Spielberg productions, and that is The War of the Worlds. This movie was um, huge for me when I was in high school. It came out in 2005. Um, I was 16 years old. I saw this movie three times in theaters. It just struck with me. Um, the first two thirds of this movie are just absolutely phenomenal. I'm not the biggest fan of the way it ends, but I can push aside that like tiny little bit of the ending and enjoy the majority of this movie for just how freaking incredible it is. Um, the opening freaking salvo when the aliens first attack is just insanely well done. Um, just the, the tension that this movie manages to ring out throughout the majority of its runtime is just fucking incredible. The, the section alone, when him and his daughter are hiding out in the basement with Tim Robbins and the aliens show up and they have to try and keep calm while Tim Robbins is just losing his fucking mind is just so freaking good. Like this movie is just a lot of fun and it is just so well done. Um, it's, it's, spectacle like only Spielberg can do. I know I say that countlessly with all of these movies, but it's just, it, it, it deserves being reset over and over again because nobody knows how to do spectacle like Steven Spielberg. Like his shot selections in movies, just like they are freaking incredible to me. Like every one of his movies, I'm just glued to the screen because of the way he, he chooses to stage scenes is just, like his blocking is, is unparalleled. It's, it's, he's just so good. Up next is the Steven Spielberg movie, The Color Purple. Um, it's just a really good movie. This was this was a this was a a big gamble for Spielberg when he first made this movie. Like it, for him to take on this kind of source material, being who he was, was definitely interesting to say the least. Um, taking on the subject matter, but he did absolutely phenomenal with it. I think he was the perfect person to bring that story to life in the way that, like, he can just, like I talked about with every other movie, like, just the way he stages scenes is just so unique and larger than life, and, like, he could bring out the moments in this uh, book 
um, to really like bring it to the screen and give it the gravitas that it deserves. Like he was an actually inspired choice to do this movie, I feel like. Um, and I think it was phenomenally well done. Um, I, I enjoyed this movie so much. I think Danny Glover is amazing in it. Um, I think um, Oprah Winfrey is amazing in it. Um, is it Oprah Winfrey or is it Whoopi Goldberg? Uh, I think. Let's look on the back. I thought it was Oprah Winfrey, but now I'm thinking I think it was Whoopi Goldberg. It was Whoopi Goldberg. Whoopi Goldberg in her movie debut. This was her movie debut, and she is absolutely phenomenal in this. Um, it's just, it was a really good fucking movie just about um, her life in this movie, um, and I enjoy it a lot. Up next is the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, um, Steven Spielberg's first foray into science fiction, and what a foray it was into it, all about following Richard Dreyfus and these people in the small town that come in contact with alien life forms. It is a just phenomenal movie. It's one of those ones that really shows you in the beginning just how much of an eye he had for visual spectacle. Um, the ending alone, where they meet in the big, huge mountain pass and the alien ship comes down with the music, and it's just... He just knew how to bring out the larger-than-life portions of scripts better than anybody else. Um, and this is just, is just one of those examples of just how well-tuned he was behind the camera, that he was going to be something that was going to be a marvel to watch grow in film history. I saw this movie as a kid, and I was blown away by it. Um, I freaking loved it. I used to watch it all the time. I just watched it recently, um, not too long ago, and I'm just reminded of just how visually, like, delicious it is. Up next is a movie that I watched in high school in my American film history class, and that is Empire of the Sun, starring a young Christian Bale as he gets put in an internment camp during World War II. Um, this is just another incredible movie. This is just one of those ones that just shows Spielberg's just attention to detail, just how well he could bring to life a story, like how he can just pull out those moments of drama, those moments to be sentimental, those moments to tug at your heartstrings. Like he was an absolute legend when it just came to meshing visual style with beautiful thematic moments that were going to tug at your heartstrings, give you something beautiful, and just make you feel like you got your bang for your buck when you went and saw a movie. Like, this was one of those movies that was just outstanding. I remember watching this in my class when it, it was a long movie, so we, we had to watch it over, like, two or three periods. And I remember I was like, fuck that, I can't wait. I remember that we, we had to pause it at one point in the first day that we watched it and I went home and um this was time me and my stepdad he wasn't my stepdad at the time but he was dating my mom we both had these movie collections his was much bigger than mine I just had movies that I loved as a kid he had everything and of course he had this movie and I immediately was like uh mom we need to go over to his house so that I can watch this movie because I cannot wait until class tomorrow so I went and watched the whole fucking movie from start to finish and it just absolutely floored me this is just a fucking incredible warm movie from Spielberg. Up next is another movie that I watched in my American film class in high school, and that is Amistad, another just fucking incredible Spielberg movie. It's, a, it's another movie that only Spielberg can bring to the screen with just his flair for just just bringing these moments to life. Um, it chronicles the journey of a group of enslaved Africans who overtake their captured ship and attempt to return it to their homeland. Um, when it's seized, the captives are brought to the United States and put on trial, and it follows this amazing courtroom drama of trying to get these slaves freed and brought back to their homeland. It is just fucking incredible. Um, Anthony Hopkins delivers probably the greatest speech anyone's ever given in film history. Um, he is just absolutely incredible in the movie. Um, There's another one, same thing, where we, we couldn't finish it one day in school, and I immediately went home and it was like, does my stepdad have this movie? And I was like, yes, he did. And I was like, I'm fucking watching it right now from start to finish. I can't I can't watch movies in halves. I don't know how people do that, um, but I am not one of those people. I need to watch everything from start to finish. So I immediately went home and watched this movie and was just floored. Uh, it was one of those movies where I was just sobbing at the end of it. I was just like, Dude. It's one of those movies that I watch and it, it just reminds me, one, how much I fucking love watching movies and two, just how much I love Spielberg movies because it's just like every time you're watching, every scene, every shot, you're just like, I am watching an absolute legend. I'm watching a generational, once in a lifetime talent doing what he was born to do. It's just absolutely incredible. 
Up Next is a movie that I think for most people might be controversial to be up this high, but I think for anybody who was around my age who grew up during this time period, and this is a movie that you grew up with as a kid, would probably hit this high up there for you too. It's, it's a very nostalgia-based movie, but it's a movie to me that I think does work on a lot of levels. Sure, it might be very silly, but sometimes one of those movies is just something that you love to be silly, and it's just something that you can, you can go back to over and over again, and that is Hook. Um, I just, this movie, I love this movie and I understand that for some people there it is, um, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work for some people in this movie. For me, this movie just works. I think it's a very fun idea to do like what if Peter Pan grew up and then has to return to Neverland. It's, it's, it's bolstered by some great performances. Robin Williams, just absolutely incredible choice to be an adult Peter Pan. Um, Julia Roberts as Tinkerbell. Um, Bo, uh, Bob Hoskins as um, Shmi is just so goddamn funny. And Dustin Hoffman as Captain Hook is just inspired. The two of them, Bob Hoskins and Dustin Hoffman, just play off of each other so well. And I think this movie is just a lot of fun. It's one of those movies that I can watch anytime you want to put it on. Yes, I know that it's probably partly based on the fact that I grew up on this movie. I watched this movie so much as a kid. But, you know, like we're, we're shaped by our lives. We're shaped by our experiences throughout our lives. So naturally, this movie ranks really high up for me simply because it's a movie I grew up with. It's a movie that I remember throughout my life experiencing so much along with my life. So it resonates a lot to me. And I could see there's probably movies there based on when you were born when it came out that probably resonates more with you. And that's just the way that it goes with movies like this. We are um, a slave to not only watching a movie, but to who we are as a person when that movie comes out and when we see it for the first time. So a movie resonates with you way more than just the movie itself. And this is one of those movies that to me resonates so much to me because I remember growing up watching it as a kid with my brother, with my parents all the time. Just It was just one of those movies that always brought me joy to go and watch as a kid, you know, like on your down days and your days when you just wanted to watch something that was going to cheer you up. This was one of those movies that I would put on. So this movie always will be very heartwarming to me and be high up on the list for me. It's just one of those movies that's just effortlessly enjoyable. I love the set pieces in this movie. I think this movie uh, has some of the best set design for a movie from that time. It's just a lot of fun, and I always love that when movies go through the motions to make a big, huge set instead of just trying to green screen the shit out of it. Not that they had the option to really green screen a lot of shit back then, but still, just the flair that they went through to bring this movie to life is just so much fun. I just, I love this movie. Up next is the second remake that Spielberg did in his career, and that is West Side Story. This was a movie that I was a little on the fence about when it first was announced that he was doing it. I was like, if anybody's going to make it worth being remade, it would be Spielberg because he's going to have that visual eye. But it was another one of those things where we're just like, I don't think we need another one of these. But I'm glad to have eaten my words because this movie is just a tour de force. It's just freaking phenomenal. And it's brought to life in a way that only Spielberg can do. It's one of those movies that like, Everything I was skeptical about in that first scene was thrown out the window by just how well he stages this stuff. And like, it's insane to think that this is the first time that he's doing a musical because he just stages all the numbers and everything so well. Like there's a scene in the movie when you have Ansel Elgort first meets Rachel Z Ziegler, Ziegler, I think her name is. And they meet behind the bleachers of this dance. And there's this like beautiful lighting behind them where it just like makes the spot back behind the bleachers where they are look like it's the place to be. It looks like it's the most romantic place in the world. And all they have is just eyes for each other. And they're singing with each other and dancing around, getting close. And they lean in and they kiss. And then their friends show up and it breaks the 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 notion between them and it brings them back into reality and we now see that those lights are gone and that they're just behind a ratty bleacher that just has crap all over the floor and everything just like he's just a fucking maestro at blocking and staging scenes that just bring you into this movie and he does so much it was just one of those movies where it was just like Spielberg remaking West Side Story like absolutely that's a no-brainer and it just shows in every scene in this movie I fucking love this movie every movie from here on out from West Side Story until we get to number one is a five-star movie from me this man has more five-star movies from me than any other person on the planet and this is where we start the journey with West Side Story. Up next is another movie that only Spielberg can bring to life, and that is the movie Munich, about um, the secret Israeli squad that was assigned to track down and assassinate the 11 Palestines that have orchestrated the 1972 Munich Massacre. Um, it is just 
insanely good. This is another movie that I saw when I was in Florida on a Disney trip where we just went, we went after the theater one day, like me and my, my family. Um, and I convinced them that like, this was the movie we needed to go see. Um, I know what, what a family vacation movie to go see in Munich. Um, but I'm so glad we did go see it because it's just so freaking good. Um, Eric Bana in it is just absolutely incredible. Jeffrey Rush, a young Daniel Craig showing up in it. Like this movie is just so freaking good and just such a meditation on the quest of revenge and everything it's just it's absolutely incredible i love everything about this movie um it's a movie i can watch anytime you want to put it on i just think it's just so visually captivating and it's just such a good meditation on the human spirit and just like how far we will go in the name of revenge and how much of yourself you are willing to sacrifice in this quest and up next after that is his newest film. We were wondering where it's going to land, and here it lands right now after Munich, and that is his latest film, The Fablemans. It is an autobiographical film of Spielberg's life as a kid and what made him fall in love with telling stories and wanting to be a filmmaker and the quest that he went through in his young life that brought him to that dream. It is a beautiful movie that just has an age-old question of just being born into art and just torn towards something that you know you're destined to do against like your family values and being with your family and like finding something that is more firmly planted in reality it's a quest between his mom and his dad his dad based on science his mom based on art and you're watching those two struggle within him as he tries to find his place in this world and what he wants to bring to his life it is a beautiful movie it's just it's a lot of fun it's visually beautiful it's brought to life in a way that only Spielberg knows how there's so many scenes in this movie that's literally just the young Spielberg character showing an audience the short film that he made but in just the way that he blocks the scenes and makes this just what could be such a boring scene visually and thematically interesting is just something that only he can pull off it's just it's an absolute there there should be a master class where you just go through every frame of every one of his movies and just see how just fucking incredible it is on how he brings these things to life it is an absolutely stunning movie i loved every second of it i want to go see it again i'm hoping i'm going to be able to go see it again in theaters before it leaves because it is just a beautiful movie. But now we get into the really, really fun stuff. A lot of my favorite Spielberg movies are movies that aren't ones that take so seriously. As we see a lot of this stuff, we've gone through like serious political thrillers, serious like World War I dramas, serious dramas about slavery. Um, but my favorite Spielberg movies were always the ones from early in his career where he was just making these fun genre picks. And we start that off with Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Indiana Jones is my my favorite film series is my favorite movie character as you can see I'm wearing an Indiana Jones sweatshirt he is the quintessential hero to me he is what every action adventure movie invariably owes a debt to he is just absolutely incredible and we start here with indiana jones and the last crusade uh, this movie is so much fun it is the third in what was originally a trilogy of these movies um it follows him in the search of the last um of the holy grail with his father um it's just a fun movie that it's just a nice fun father-son journey movie where we get to peel back some more layers of indiana jones's family sean connery is a, an amazing addition as indiana jones's father like only james bond could play indiana jones's father it is the movie that is just um, anchored by some amazing set pieces, the fight with the tank, um, the chase scene um, in the river. Um, I forget where they are. I want to say it's in Venice. Um, there's just so much. There's so many good action scenes in this movie and even the end when he has to go through all the trials um to even get to the holy grail like this movie is just anchored by so much fun stuff it is just effortlessly entertaining it has so many funny bits in it still today to date one of my favorite bits in a movie ever is when um he throws the nazi out of the uh, blimp and he just turns around and just goes no ticket and everybody just throws up their ticket because they don't want to be the next one to be thrown out of the blimp. Like, it's just it's just anchored by so many of those funny scenes. Like, it's just, it's, it's incredible, this movie. And then just eking out that movie, for me personally, I know for some people this might be their least favorite Indiana Jones movie. But for me, up next is Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I love this movie despite all the flaws that you might want to bring up about how culturally insensitive it might be today. All that stuff might be true, um, but... I still love this movie regardless. And the way you can really look at it is I don't really think it's a lot of people like to say like it's it's culturally insensitive to like Indians, but like I don't really know if that's the case because it's not like it comes out and says this is what all Indians are like. It's just you're 
the place where we see all this like crazy shit happening where it's like they're eating monkey brains and they're eating bugs and they're eating snakes is in a death cult like these we're in a cult of people that are brainwashing children to do their bidding for them to find like all this shit for them so like it to me it's not so much that we're like commentating on like this is what that culture is like it's more like they're just saying this is what this section of like insane people are like like this is just what this death cult is like because we also meet like the the small tribe that hires indy to go and find the shankara stones and that is a very i feel like that one does a very respectful job of the culture and like indy playing up how respectful they need to be especially when he's like this is more food than these people see in a month like you're embarrassing me eat this food like you sh it shows the reverence that indy he has for all cultures like i think people just probably get a little too like quick to want to be like how dare they say this stuff about these people when really it's just like one small collection of like this death cult thing uh, but i mean regardless of whatever you want to say if it's culturally insensitive or not i don't think you can deny that this movie is still a lot of fun this movie has the best opening sequence of any indiana jones movie that i've ever seen i thought it was an inspired idea to switch up from raiders and have it open with a dance number that then opens into this club where indy gets it into a fight with the guy loud Lau Shea. like it is just such a fun opening that only they know how to do like indiana jones gets poisoned and he has to find the antidote while also fighting these people and getting the diamond back from the from willie like it's just such a fun movie i love i love everything about this movie um i think short round's a great character i love the interaction between him and indiana jones i even think willie is a great character i know a lot of people can't stand the fact that willie just like shrieks and is annoying the entire movie but she's a go-go dancer. She's literally a dancer in a club. And that's all she knows in her life. Of course she's going to be like that when you put her in that situation. And I think that's what mines a lot of good humor out of this movie for me. Is that you took this woman that has no business being in this world with these two guys. Indiana Jones and Short Round. And now they have to like not only solve this case and find the shrunk car stones and save these children. But they also have to deal with this fucking girl that has no business being there with them. So I think that just gets a lot of fun out of it. Like I know like a a lot of people are just like i can't stand it she just shrieks and is annoying and doesn't it's like yeah she's supposed to do that that's the point of the character she's a fish out of water with these people um so i am a huge defender of this movie i will always be a huge defender of this movie it is dark as shit like it takes a lot to make a movie that creates an entire new rating like there was no pg-13 rating before this movie this is the movie that gave us the pg-13 rating because they were like this is too intense for pg not enough to get an r rating there's got to be something in the middle because this movie is dark as shit and it really is dark as shit like this is a pg movie and a dude pulls a beating heart right out of a guy's chest and then they light him on fire like that's fucking insane like this movie has no business being as insane as it is and i fucking love it up next after that is a sci-fi masterpiece minority report i freaking love this movie it's a movie about precognition and about how um these people are able to figure out crimes before they happen and so the, all these cops go in and arrest people for crimes before they co are committed and tom cruise is a guy who ends up working in this uh organization and he ends up being accused of a murder that has not yet happened and now he has to go on a run on the run and figure out what the fuck is going on and why this is happening and is this precognition thing not as good as it shows and pretty much try and bring down the whole entire system it is a stellar sci-fi ride it is just so much fun the set pieces in it are fucking incredible there is a scene in it right after tom cruise gets new eyes and he can't see and they send these like little skeletal ro like spider robots in to go searching for everybody it is just this movie is just balls to the walls which is action sci-fi set pieces that are just like thoroughly enjoyable and just so incredible to watch um tom cruise is fucking awesome in it as always uh colin farrell is great in it this is just a fucking roller coaster of a ride it is just so much fun up next is a movie that broke all box office records that you possibly could back in the day when it first came out, and that is the original Jurassic Park, the OG, an absolutely just stellar movie. I probably watched this movie more than anything else when I was a kid. This came out, right? I think it was, it was what, 93, so I was probably like four or five years old when this came out. This movie was just absolutely incredible, was my life. I freaking love it. I remember seeing it in the big screen back in the day, saw it when they re-released it in 3D. Like, I love this movie. I can watch it over and over and over again. The rest of the movies that we're about to get to now are movies that anytime you want to put them on i'll watch them i mean pretty much we've been that way since 
um, West Side Story, any of these movies, you could put them on and I can watch them over and over and over again. But this one especially, it just holds such a special place in my heart as being another movie much like Hook that I just grew up on. Like these, the 90s Spielberg movies that grew up with me um, as I grew up are just so special to me. Um, I love these movies. This movie especially is just so well. You will never be able to make another Jurassic Park movie that's ever going to come close to this original. It is just an absolute testament to just visual filmmaking by Spielberg, tearing at the heartstrings, just so much. It's just, it's just so it's a movie that only Steven Spielberg can make can make and it's a wonder why when you watch all the other ones that they never come close to touching the magic of this one because even Spielberg himself couldn't replicate the beauty of this one with this second one like this movie is just it's it's just so special I think everybody probably has this up in their top like 15 of Spielberg movies like that's their top 10 like that's just how like special and lasting this movie is up next is a movie, again, that I watched in my American film history class. It is a movie that absolutely floored me the first time I saw it. It's a movie unlike anything else in Spielberg's career. It's a movie that, I, even though it's up this high, I can't watch a lot because it's just, it's, it's really hard to watch. And that is Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List. Um, this is one of the most important movies ever made. Like, the story that it tells... Liam Neeson um, working under the Nazis during World War II and the countless Nazis that he, uh, the countless Nazis, the countless Jews that he managed to save during this time in there. Um, is This movie is just so, it's gut-wrenching, it's intense, um, it has some beautiful imagery in it at times. It is just a movie that is a testament to the human spirit and the um, endurance that it could last to get through and how even in the darkest of periods there will be shining examples of light in there that can help protect people it is a beautiful movie it is another one that i just i had to go home and watch it and thank god my stepdad of course had it and i watched it in one sitting and it was just it was one of those movies that you need to watch in one sitting it's just it's it's just so gut-wrenching and i'm glad i did because i was fucking sobbing by the end of this movie so i had to prepare myself because the last thing you want to be as a 16 year old boy in high school is like sobbing in front of all your other classmates while this movie's going on uh, it's just but this movie is just it's just i don't think there was a dry eye in my class by the time this movie was done playing um it is it is just insanely it's special and it's it's insane that he released this in the same year that he released jurassic park like what a just one two punch in a year from that man like just showing that he is the absolute maestro behind the camera that he can make one of the most biggest blockbuster spe spectacles of all time and then make this like gut-wrenching and heart-searing drama about um one of, the, one of the most dastardly things about world war ii it's just he's just a legend up next is probably the most effortlessly enjoyable movie in Spielberg's filmography, and that is Catch Me If You Can. One of the funnest movies in his filmography. Dan, Tom Hanks, just absolutely stellar in it. Leo, in a Spielberg movie, inspired. Just He's so good in this movie. Everybody in this movie is just so much fun. This is just such a fun movie to watch over and over and over again. I can watch it anytime it's on. Me and my brother quote it all the time. The scene when he is pretending to be a doctor and he sees the kid who broke his leg and they're giving him the diagnosis and he just goes like, uh, Dr. Mitchell, do you concur? You go, what, sir? Do you concur with the other doctor's assessment that his leg is broken? Uh, yes. So, it's true, you concur. All right, then, stitch him up. And he goes and walks away, and the other guy looks at him and just goes, I should have concurred. Like, it's just, it's, it seems like that that are just so effortlessly fun about this movie. And it's just stuff that I could watch over and over and over again. Tom Hanks is just a legend in this movie. Uh, oh, what, do you want me to tell a joke? Knock, knock. Who's there? Go fuck yourself. Like, it's it, one, It's just one of the funnest movies in Spielberg's career. Like, I can watch this movie over and over and over again, and it just never gets tired. Me and my brother fucking love this movie. We'll watch it all the time. Um, if it's on the plane, when I'm on a plane going anywhere, I'll watch it. I just fucking love this movie. We've got one last movie that I watched in my American film history class back in the day, and that is Steven Spielberg's World War II magnum opus, Saving Private Ryan. Um, another movie that I had to immediately go home and watch by myself, like, the whole way through to really capture just how fucking special and amazing this movie is. This movie changed war movies. Like, the the war movies before this were always just seemed like it was just, like, fun to go to war because you were going on, like, hoorah missions. This was the first movie that really came out that it was just like, nah, dude, war is fucking hell. And you're an absolute idiot if you want to go to it. Um, the opening scene alone is just so gut-wrenchingly intense 
Uh, it's just, it's one of those movies that's fucking insane. Like, every scene is just dripping with just visual splendor, like, gut-wrenching scenes. It's just, it's one of the fucking best movies I've ever seen in my life. Um, Steven Spielberg is an absolute legend. It blows my mind still to this day that this movie did not win Best Picture, that it lost to Shakespeare in Love because of that absolute fucking disgusting human of a being, um, Harvey Weinstein. Fuck you, you piece of shit. Um, it's, it, I can't believe this movie didn't win the Academy Award. It's, uh, it just still blows my mind. Uh, this movie is fucking incredible. Um, I can't get through it without crying by the end. I don't think anybody can get through this movie without crying at the end. Like, it's just so good. Like, by the time Tom Hanks is sitting there and he's just looking at Matt Damon, he just goes like, earn this. It, you're just, you're floored. This movie is just so visually special. Uh, I fucking love it. It's, it's amazing. It's immaculate. I could watch it anytime you want to put it on. And it's a movie, it's an absolute must see of not only war movies, but Spielberg movies. So if you've been out there and you love watching movies and you haven't seen Saving Private Ryan, do yourself a favor and get out there and watch this movie. But it's top three time, baby. And it is the most special movies in Spielberg's career. Um, there are movies that uh, mean more to me than anything of the other ones. I can watch these movies over and over and over again. Any one of them. If you catch me on the right day, they might be interchangeable on any day. But they are just fucking immaculate. They are perfect in every way. They are absolute masterpieces. And we start at number three with Jaws. One of the best uh, creature feature movies ever made. This movie invented the modern blockbuster. It absolutely blew up. It made people afraid to go in the water for so long. I remember when I saw this movie as a kid, I was like, I will never go in the fucking ocean again. This is fucking terrifying. Uh, probably watched this movie way earlier than I probably should have as a kid. Uh, but it's just freaking incredible. Actually, this past summer, got to go see it on the big screen when they released it in IMAX. And it was just unreal. It was so great to see it in IMAX. It looked fucking amazing in 4K there in IMAX. It was just... This is one of the greatest movies ever made. I, I remember watching it as a kid and just fucking blown away by it. And as soon as I heard it was a book, I, I found a way to get the book and read the book. It, this movie is just incredible. And it showed Spielberg, even in his youngest, in his first movie, all those visual, beautiful shot selections that we would come to love from this man. You could see right there from the outset that this guy was going to be a special once in a generation of talent. He just absolutely changed the name of cinema. He was fucking amazing. And what a debut for such a storied filmmaker. In second place is my favorite Indiana Jones movie. That is his first one, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Probably the best action adventure movie ever made. It, from Right from the opening salvo where he goes into the whatever temple and goes through all the booby traps and gets attacked by the boulder. Like you just knew you were in for something special here. Indiana Jones is the greatest hero of all time. I will fight you tooth and nail to the end of time for any other character you want to try and say is better than him. You're wrong. He is the best action hero of all time uh just it's just fucking amazing all the set pieces in this movie are amazing um from the fights in cairo all the way to the end uh, when they get stuck in the temple with the snakes and he fights the guy on the plane like there's everything about this is just so fucking incredible and it all boils down to the amazingness of his character where they just go like where are you going like what are you gonna do and he goes i don't know i'm making this up as i go along he is not the man with the plan he just knows he needs to get it done and he will stop at nothing to get it done my favorite thing about action heroes are ones where they're not they don't need to be roided up they don't need to be big ass kickers my favorite types of action heroes are like indiana jones where he just spends the entire movie getting the shit kicked out of him but he will just never quit until he completes his mission because he's just all heart, baby. And that's what's just so amazing about these movies. They are just so fucking incredible. And this one is the absolute peak of Indiana Jones. But there can only be one, and if you've been following along, if you are a Steven Spielberg fan, it should come to no surprise to anybody what that one is, and that is E.T. E.T. is a movie that I grew up with. I uh, grew up with the ride at Universal. It is a movie that means more to me than any other movie in his storied career. It's, one of, it's my second favorite movie of all time. Um, it is just... It, it, it's everything that's great about Spielberg all rolled into one. The sentimentality, um, the ability to tug at your heartstrings, to tell this just wondrous story full of visual splendor with amazing music by John Williams. He is just, this is just a movie that cemented him as one of the best to ever do it. It is just one of the greatest stories of all time. I'm so happy that I got to see it on IMAX back in the summer. At the end of the summer, they had it out in IMAX, and it was just so fucking great to see it in that 4K IMAX theater. This movie, just the history shot selections are just incredible in these movies i just love the way he formats and blocks scenes i just love everything about the way that he structures his movies and this is i think the culmination of everything that he can do all rolled into one to just create 
a just lightning in a bottle movie. And the, the, the fact that he's been able to create so many of these lightning in a bottle movies just shows that he is one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, if not the greatest. Obviously, it's up to debate depending on how you are as a person and how you enjoy these. But I think his career speaks for itself that even if he's not your favorite, you can't deny the fact that this man is one of the best to ever do it. Um, and this is, I think, the crowning achievement in his storied career. And that'll do it for my list. This man has been working for so many generations, so many decades, so many people and lives that he's touched. He is the greatest filmmaker of all time to me. I know I've talked about it ad nauseum throughout all these movies, but it cannot be said enough just how much this man means to me. He is my favorite director of all time. I thank him for his valued career, for his storied career, for all of the movies that he's given me, and I hope that he still has many more left to come before we sign the curtain call on his career. He is the greatest of all time the goat. But that'll do it for all of us here at The Outpost today. Let me know down below what your favorite Spielberg movies are, what movies of his mean the most to you, what you grew up with, all that good stuff. I want to hear it down below. And until next time, you have been you, I have been me. These are the movies that we love so much. And until next time, adventure on.